first uh, we started with uh, Ophidias. If you remember, uh, we spoke of uh, Crotalus. That was the last remedy for uh, Fiji's we had done. Okay. So, any quick questions in Crotalus? If you have uh, no issues in Crotalus, we'll uh, straight away start with a, a simple group. Okay. So, <clears throat> what I was trying to tell you is uh, in today's class. We will uh, try to focus on a very important area. And uh, this class being for uh, PG scholars, okay, we will try to explore this possibility in detail. My simple question for you this afternoon is, how will you know the action of a drug? It's a very simple question. but. I need some inputs from your side. How will you know the action of a drug? Distance, okay. Na? How will you know the action of the drug? Okay. So, simple question. So, how will you know? Toxicological. Very good. You will get to know from the toxicological source. Agreed. Apart from toxicological source? Drug okay, drug proving. Good. Beautiful. Second. Okay, based on the active components. But see, uh, act, having active components, how will you know what the active component will do? That is the question. How will you know the action of a drug? See, the action of a drug could be because of a specific alkaloid. But how will you get to know? Okay, by, by drug proving, absolutely right, agreed. Good, drug proving. And somebody was talking of, uh, what is it? Toxicology. Toxicology. So what do you mean by toxicology? Poisoning. Good. Poisoning. Poisoning. Good. Third. Or see, if, I mean if you want me to modify the question, when you look at the bulk of uh, homeopathic material medical literature that we have, that bulk comes from various uh, sources. Correct? Okay. It can be either uh, from the drug proving and majority of the deeper acting remedies, poisonous remedies, we have got the information from poisoning. From poisoning. Good, agreed. One last thing that you can think of. There might be many more, but for today's class, one more uh, important uh, uh, way, how you will get to know the action of a drug. Okay, how will you study the symptomatology? Okay, clinical is one. Agreed. I I am not. I've got nothing against clinical. Okay, doctor of signature also could be a possibility. Okay, see one simple thing. For example, if you have read Clark, if you have read remedies from Clark, like for example, if you have read Plumbum, okay, or if you have read uh, Mark, or if you have read uh, any of those uh, metals and chemicals, one more important source is toxicity. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, come to this point. So this is what I was trying to highlight. You will know the action of a drug either through the toxicity, through the drug proving, and there's something called as poisoning. These two words might be a little similar, okay? But I have given a different uh, heading. I hope I'm clear why a different heading has been given. Now, what is the simple difference between toxicity and poisoning? Toxicity and poisoning. Okay, could be in a lesser form. Could be in a lesser form. And it can be over a period of time. Okay? For example, people working in uh, graphite factory, hmm? people working in lead factory, they may come up with graphite toxicity. Hmm? Okay, so if you read Clark, if you read Graphites or if you read uh, other, uh, uh, you know, remedies, especially Plum Bomb, hmm? so there it is mentioned that, you know, toxicity also adds to the bulk of uh, the uh, homeopathic uh, literature. So toxicity, drug proving and poisoning, 
these are three very important things. Anything else, as a PG scholar, you would like to contribute. I know drug proving, empirical, we are not talking of sources. We are talking of this particular heading. How will you know the action of a drug? Okay? Hmm? Clinically. Yeah, clinically it will come a little later. Okay? On a primary level, how will you know? Primarily drug proving and before drug proving came in, toxicity and of course poisoning. Very important. Okay? Hmm? Now, why this is coming up in today's classes? Why do you feel this particular uh, you know, component is important? Why do you feel this particular component is important? So, uh, as, we, as we said, like every remedy has a particular action. Like okay. It has its neurotoxic action. Yes. Toxic action. Okay. By knowing this pathogenesis, mm -hmm. we can target that pathogenesis. Very good. So, Dakshwet has a point. She says, sir, every remedy has an affinity. So, we will get to know a given remedy has an affinity towards what? Okay? Beautiful point. Then, anything else? Provings are not continued till pathology. Okay. Provings are not continued till the pathology. Okay. Done. Okay. Then, see now the uh, next component we are trying to understand is why is the knowledge of uh, drug action important? So, each remedy has its own drug of, I mean, organ affinity is what Dr. Shweta just told and anything else that you can think of. Why is this drug pathogenesis or this fear of action important for us? Why is it important? Hmm? The symptoms may be same, sir. Mm -hmm. Underlying organ affection may be different. Hmm. For example, this near. <coughs> when we Sorry. do heart affections or hmm. lung affections, mm -hmm. the drug which we choose should have an action on heart or lung. Okay. So Dr. Vankatri says, if somebody is coming to you with uh, difficulty in breathing, it could be because of various reasons. From the material medical point of view, through a remedy, through its drug affinity, we will get to know if the remedy is indicated. In a given case of dyspnea, if it is because of uh, liver pathology, lung pathology, heart pathology, or anything else. Good, probable. Anything else that you can think of. See, understanding drug pathogenesis okay, will also help us in explaining materia medica better. Okay? Materia medica explanation will have a scientific touch. If you, if you talk from the physiology and if you start talking from the anatomy or from the allied science, you will have a better way of explaining uh, remedies. Okay? So, knowing the action of uh, a remedy the sphere of action pathogenesis will also help us in uh, making the concepts clear for a student or for a practitioner. Okay. And uh, many times, you know, the drug pathogenesis, it will also try to tell us the remedy. You know, in the end, you have a repertorial totality. You have a list of remedies that have come up. Based on the sphere of action, you can also decide. Hmm? Okay. Is it only based on the sphere of action or you want to go a step ahead? Pathogenesis. To the extent, to the extent of the pathology that is there. Hmm? Okay. See many times you know when we have deeper pathologies, we don't think of, uh, see allium sepa acts on mucous membrane. I'll give a simple example. Okay. Then, But you also know the limitation of allium sepa acting on the mucous membrane. What is the action of allium sepa and mucous membrane? Yeah. It will cause yeah. cataral inflammation, cold, coryza, acrid discharges. Is it acute or is it chronic? Acute. So when you have somebody coming to you with a serious chronic issue affecting the mucous membrane, will we think of allium sepa? No. Because allium sepa has a, a, a very short role to play. Uh, many times I have also given this example of uh, chelidonia. You all know chelidonium is a liver remedy. But to what extent, to in which pathology of liver you think of chelidonium is also very important. So sphere of action, pathogenesis will give us a clarity. Okay? To what extent or in what type of diseases a remedy can be thought of. Okay? 
Now, how will you understand sphere of action? What are all the important uh, 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 things you need to remember when we discuss sphere of action? What do you feel is important? What do you feel is important? What is the basic knowledge you should have to understand sphere of action better? Okay, you need to understand the anatomy, you need to understand the physiology. Only two? Pathology. Okay, slowly we are going to the second year. Good. Okay, so anat, physio, pathology are the basic subjects that help us in understanding the pathogenesis. Only these three? Only these three? Can you think something out of the box? Which I am sure you will be knowing. Must be a post-lunch class. You are all stuck. Okay. So I had physiopathology, absolutely right. Psych Anything else? Huh? Psychology. psychology. Something you can think of other than psychology. Okay, so psychology in pathogenesis has a very limited role to play. Fine? Must be when you talk of mental symptoms, we can use the knowledge of uh, psychology. But in pathogenesis, at least from the answer coming from uh, Dr. Krishna Das, he will be having something in his mind. So when you are having uh, pathology, I mean psychology, what made you think of psychology? In uh, pathogenesis, in understanding pathogenesis, how will the knowledge of psychology help? Okay. Okay. Okay, I mean uh, remedies which acts on the mind. Probably, okay. But when you look at the, uh, you know, pathogenesis, very few remedies in uh, books, they talk of uh, mind. Another thing that Vinod is talking here is uh, knowledge of uh, FMT. That's very, very important. At least to understand pathogenesis. See, one more thing I wanted to highlight here is knowledge of miasm. You agree? Knowledge of miasm also will help you in understanding the pathogenesis better. Allied subjects knowledge of uh, uh, what is it, miasm can be a beautiful combo in understanding the pathogenesis better. Okay, one last question and then we can go ahead with the presentation. What are all the books that you feel will give us a clarity when it comes to pathogenesis? Okay. So, uh, I mean, we had a small presentation few days back. We were talking of different types of homeopathic material medica. So, when you are preparing for a class on the pathogenesis, so you have some specific books that you need to look into. Like, you know, to be very specific, we have uh, Richard Hughes, Pharmacodynamics. And then we have Physiological Material Medica by Dr. Burt. Burt, Burt, Burt. Okay. And to a certain extent, we also have uh, E.F. Farrington, Clinical Material Medica. He also gives you some clarity. But these two books, the first two books, they are very, very important when you talk of, when you talk of, uh, uh, you know, pathogenesis. Fine. So what we are going to do here for next 30-40 uh, minutes is, we are trying to understand, we are trying to understand uh, the pathogenesis of a very important group of remedies, okay? And the group of remedies that we are going to discuss today is Merck group. I will try to limit my class only to the pathogenesis. Next 30-40 minutes, we will try to have, or we will try to have a class with some difference, okay? So, if you just read the topic that I have chosen for today is, yes, we are trying to understand the pathogenesis of Merck group, not Merck, Merck group, okay? So, we will go stepwise. When I use the word, we will be looking at the pathogenesis of Merck group. The first question that comes up is, which are all the remedies that belong to Merck group? Okay, I hope you are getting my point. If you understand which are those remedies, which belong to Merck group, then we can slowly start trying to understand. Okay. So, which are all the remedies? Can I have uh, the list of remedies belonging to Merck group? Merck Sol? Merck Or? Merck Ayod. Merck Ayod. You have a remedy by name Merck Ayod? 
Mark your flavors. Mark your rubber. Good. Then cinnabar is mark sulfide. Mark sulfide is cinnabar. Then we have a remedy called as mark dulk. Yes, good. Mark dulk. 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 Mark cyanatum. Mark acetum. Mark brom. If you look into the remedy, I mean the list. You have a very bigger list. But keeping the PGs in mind, you know, I am going in the alphabetical order. We have Merck Aceticus, Merck Binaidratus Rubber. See now, Binaidratus Rubber, anyway, we will be talking in detail a little later. But this is Merck with red iodine, that combination, okay. Merck Corrosivus, Merck Cyanatus, Merck Dulcis. Mark iodine flavors. Here, this is this was red iodine. This is green iodine. Okay, the combination. Mark perinis. Mark sulfuretous rubber. Dr. Venta, they were talking. This is uh, cinnabaris. Mark sulfide is what it is called. Mark sulf. Mark mark. You also have uh, mark solubilis. And the last thing we have here is Merck virus. Okay. Now, what is the difference between these two things, Merck sol and Merck virus? If you look into the uh, pathogenesis, few books give it different. See, Merck virus is nothing but the mercury. Okay. But at Hahnemann felt that the mercury available then was not the purest form. So he comes up with his own preparation. Okay? And you know Dr. Hanuman was a great chemist. One of the qualifications he had. Many uh, remedies he prepared on his own. So the literature says even today in Germany it is called Merck Solubilis Hanimani. Okay? So the basic difference is this has a little amount of uh, nitric acid, the preparation. It has got some uh, impurities. Okay? But many of us, you know, in, in our clinics, at least in my clinic, we don't have a different uh, uh, preparation of Merck Sol and Merck Vivas. Merck Sol is what is available for the homeopath. Okay? So these are all the remedies. Now, knowing these many remedies will tell us where is the affinity Mark has and we can slowly start exploring. Okay, so we'll quickly look at the action of Mark, the pathogenesis of Mark. And as a PG student, <coughs> you would have already done this in your uh, third year, group characters of Mercury or Mark group, group characters. So we'll quickly uh, limit ourselves to one specific area and that specific area is Sphere of action or pathogenesis of Merck group. Okay. So can you quickly see? Now what I told you is we'll try to make this class with a difference is we are trying to look at Merck group in general, the organ it affects, and we'll also try to fit in these remedies in particular. Is this confusing? We are trying to look at the sphere of action of Merck in general, where all Merck can have act. And then we have some small remedies, like for example, we have Merck Sinatus, Merck Dulc, Merck Ied, MIF, MIR. We will try to see where these remedies have a specific affinity. That is what we are trying to explore. And we will also try to look at some remedies which are similar and we will try to compare. Okay. So, first question is, what are all the common uh, areas Merck can affect? And before that, what is the first statement that needs to come here? Merck, to understand the pathogenesis, two, three key words need to come. One, Dr. Padmashri just told, the miasmatic background. Okay? See, please, as a PG scholar, when you are trying to upgrade yourself, Please also try and use the knowledge of uh, 
Argonan, the knowledge of Mayasam, wherever it is possible. Okay. So predominantly, from the knowledge that we already have in third year, we know Mark is predominantly a syphilitic remedy. Okay. Then it's a syphilitic remedy. So in the pathogenesis, you see a lot of uh, syphilitic things coming up. I consciously use the word predominantly. So I mean to say, Mark can have psoric affinity, Mark can also have a psychotic affinity, and Mark predominantly has syphilitic affinity. There are one one more keyword. There are there are deep acting remedies. Do you think deep makes any sense for pathogenesis? What does deep mean? Deep acting remedy. Or you can also have another word here. Not uh, a, a compensatory word. You can also have another word and that is it's a polycrest. Fine. Merck is a polycrest, but Merck group of remedies, you know they are deep acting remedies. Okay? And the miasmatic background is predominantly syphilitic. These keywords will help you in understanding or in answering you know the pathogenesis. Hope I'm clear. All of you. So what we are trying to do is to make this class more interesting, we are trying to use the knowledge of anatomy, the knowledge of physiology, the knowledge of FMT and the knowledge of pathology. Hmm? And we are trying to, you know, come to a conclusion. Yeah. You can start answering now. Which organ? I mean, pathogenesis, sphere of action. Where do you see? And I have used the word sphere of action and pathogenesis side by side. And I have told you many times, what is sphere of action? Okay, where exactly it is acting? What is pathogenesis? What is it resulting in? Fine. This difference you need to have. It acts on liver, that is sphere of action. Acting on liver, what is it doing? Is it causing inflammation? Is it causing induration? Is it causing uh, the cirrhosis? Abscess, whatever. So that becomes pathogenesis. You need to have a clarity. Now please, start. Spare of action of... Okay, Dr. Andrish has a point. He says bones. Good. I am... I will be coming to bones. Till you tell me the first slide, you are free. You can tell what you want. He says bones. Yes, it's there. But I can't skip to the bones slide immediately. Okay, yeah, bones, good. Skin and mucous membrane, beautiful, good. Lymphatic glands, good. Okay, yeah. And glands in particular. Okay, chalo. So this is what uh, Netra has told. And we'll start with this. And once I'm done with this, we'll again come back to it. We'll see what the second slide is. Okay, we'll keep playing this game till... Uh, next 40 minutes. So one is uh, lymphatic, lymphatic uh, system. So what will Merck group do acting on the lymphatic system? It will cause, it will cause uh, offensive discharges. Okay. And you all know, in Merck, you see a lot of offensivity. Can somebody add a, add a word here? Can somebody add a word when I am talking of offensivity? Merck is one of the trios of Dr. Nash offensive remedies. The other two being? The other two being? Creosote and Baptitia. Fine? Done? You all agree? Okay. So one of the trios of, uh, you know, offensive remedies. So uh, acting on the lymphatic system, it will cause offensiveness, one. And the lymph glands, the lymph glands can go into inflammation or induration. Okay, so the first action what you see is inflammation of the lymphatic system. You also have uh, offensive discharges. Second, sphere of action. One of your friend has rightly got it, so I'll we'll go for this. Okay. Now what she was trying to tell us was, it is also a remedy acting on the glands. Merck group has a special affinity for glands. Okay. Can we have a small discussion here? Which are all the glands mark predominantly affects? I know there is a picture which shows a lot of things. But predominantly. 
see, now, you know, what is that knowledge, which, which subject knowledge will help you in understanding this? Anatomy. Knowledge of anatomy. You are getting my point? So you are all uh, very capable teachers in future. So when you start teaching, please try to integrate so that your student feels uh, confident. Okay? There are so many glands. That's what you are trying to make the student understand. There are so many glands. Mark has an affinity, special affinity for certain glands. So which are those certain glands is the question we are trying to understand. So now use the knowledge of anatomy. Please try to recapture what are all the glands and then start answering. First thing that should come to your mind. Liver. Okay, more than liver. Liver is somewhere lower down. <coughs> I told you use the knowledge of anatomy. So what is the first thumb rule of anatomy? Anatomical position. Correct, no? So yeah, see this makes it more systematic. Somebody is talking of liver, somebody is talking of ing inguinal gland, somebody talks of axilla or axillary gland. You know, it will not uh, make sense. Go from above down. First thing that should come to your mind. Very good. Now, salivary glands. Good. So, Merck group has a special affinity for salivary glands. Now what will Merck do acting on the salivary glands? First thing, it will cause increased salivary secretion. And uh, physiologically, what is the term? What is the term for increased uh, thing? It is called as thylism. Good, agreed. See, what I am trying to tell you is, you know, use the knowledge that you have and make the class uh, fruitful. Okay, so it will cause thylism. It will cause excess salivation. And if it is Merck, Somebody just now told me, how, uh, what is the character in Merck? Merck, offensivity. So, horrible or horribly smelling uh, saliva, okay? Offensive saliva, excess saliva is what you see is the first action of uh, Merck on glands. Good. Any other gland that you can think of? No. Somebody was talking, yeah, now uh, Netra goes from a word. Huh? Good. So, we have uh, its affinity for tonsils. I'll put it in one word the lymphatic glands, okay, because you know tonsils, you know adenoids, you know axillary lymph nodes, you know inguinal lymph nodes, on all these lymph nodes you see Merck acting and it can cause, so it can cause what? It can cause inflammation, it can cause induration, it can cause suppuration and the last thing that can also happen is it can cause ulceration, myosin. Okay, it can cause ulceration. So one was salivary glands, second was, uh, you know, the lymphatic glands, and third, somebody rightly told was liver. Any other gland that you can think of? Yeah. Huh? Okay, reproductive, good. Ovaries, testes, agreed. Something, something more interesting in Merck. Merck group. Huh? Me? Yeah, all those mesenteric glands, agreed. One important organ you are missing. One important gland you are missing, netra. So the answer is pancreas. Pancreas, okay? So what you see is a remedy or a group, the Merck group, this is what all, all of you have contributed, salivary, pancreas, liver, ovaries, testes, okay, etc, etc. Hmm? Now what will it cause? Is what we have already discussed. Can you think of some remedies quickly, acting on glands? Quick. Phytoleca, huh? very good. Conium. Barreta. Iodum. Spongia, good. Calcarea. Huh? Yeah, conium. Okay, so these are few remedies which can be glandular. So what I try to tell you here is, when you see more of inflammation of the glands, then you have bell, calcarea, phosphorus, sulfur. When you have more of abscess, you have more of hepar, you know these remedies, mark, silesia and calcarea. When the glands go more into hypertrophy, that's when you have remedies like bromium. Quickly, which is the specific uh, gland bromium affects? Parotid, good, parotid, okay. Calcarea carb, calcarea floor, barata muir. I have told you when I did barata, a beretta which has more affinity for glands. 
okay? More affinity for glands. Though Barretta group is glandular, when you have more of glands getting, uh, you know, indurated, then the remedy is Barretta Muir. Barretta Muir. Iodum, Spongia, Merc Iod Rubrum, Merc Iod Flavum. These are remedies which can cause hypertrophy. See the beauty of this particular thing. When you look at ulcers, arsenic, phosphorus, pulsatilla, silicia, mercor. Mercor. Is this ringing some bells? Meaning, can you make out some point here? Some small clue I am trying to give you. The clue is, mercor is more syphilitic among all the merc group of remedies. I repeat this statement, Mercor is a very neglected uh, remedy. But in Merc, the more syphilitic is Mercor. If you look into your repertory, under Mercor, you just uh, search ulcers and you just uh, give a search. More than Merc saw, Mercor has more of ulcerations. So this is a take home uh, point that Mercor is more syphilitic. Okay? So we'll go ahead. We, this is something we already discussed. Acting on the salivary glands, it will cause more of increased and offensive salivation. Now, <coughs> the other gland which you already named, and that gland is liver. Okay. So any quick inputs? Which are all the Merck group of remedies which can have an affinity for liver? First question. And what will uh, Merck do acting on liver. Okay. Or why do you feel Merck has an action on liver? Very important. Why you feel Merck has an action on liver? See Merck from the literature, they say it is a cholagogo. What do you mean by that? Something which will which will help in contraction of the gallbladder and increase the bile outflow. Okay. So Merck is one. And uh, from Vinod's point, if you look at the toxicology, if you look at Merck poisoning, if you read Merck poisoning, Merck is excreted through liver. Like many metal, Merck is also stored more in liver. Okay, fine. See, Merck excretion happens through liver. It can also happen through saliva systems. Fine. So, liver is one area. And uh, I have taken this from Dr. Bird. He says it is a very powerful cholagogo and like metals in general, I have told this, it is excreted by the liver and it also manifests a tendency to accumulate more in liver. So I am just trying to justify that Merck has a very important action on liver. Okay? Hmm? Now, which are those remedies? Now this is the specialty I was trying to tell. I was trying to introduce something new for you today. And what I was trying to tell you is, we are also trying to decipher which are all the Merck groups which are having special affinity. See, if you are looking at inflammation, Merck sol and Merck cor both can cause inflammation. If you are looking at abscess, Mercor is the only three mark remedy mentioned in your repertory. So when you have liver abscess, generally we give Merc saw. Okay, henceforth please remember Mercor is a better remedy than Merc saw. Okay, and if it is cirrhosis, which you know it is syphilitic, the remedies could be more of Merc saw and Merc dulcis. Merc dulcis. Okay. So I read all the remedies from Boric and I, ju I just took the affinity so that you PG students can get benefited better. Okay? So, see now what you need to understand is Merck Iod Rubrum, Merck Iod Flavum, Merck Brome. Okay? Those remedies, they don't act on liver. Hmm? Okay? So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll look at uh, a very important area. And what is that area? is pancreas. Hmm? Merck has an affinity for pancreas. Okay. So here we can have some discussion. 
we can try to interact, you know. The first question that might come up here is, which are the other remedies acting on pancreas? That could be the first question. And what are these remedies capable of doing acting on the pancreas? Could be a second question. And what will Merck do acting on pancreas? Three questions. Hope I am clear. So what is the first question? Recall the other remedies acting on the pancreas. Good. So your repertory gives 23. I am giving you the number. With a fear, I don't want more, uh, more remedies. So minimum 23, you should be in a position to tell me. My expectation is more, I don't want uh, more remedies coming up. Okay, chalo. we will slowly start. Remedies acting on pancreas. Without looking into your mobiles. Yeah? Iris, very good. Good. Bell. Okay, Bell. Dr. Krishna Das is done. Iris, Bell. Full stop. Huh? Cifrinum. Okay, Cifrinum. At least in the upper trace is not mentioned. No issues. I told you, don't give me more than 23. Your remedy list should fall in those 23. Next, I am not very sure. Uh, anyway, I have a list because I am also afraid. <laughs> I am teaching for a PG class. I know you will have some source where you would have read and I know you will not simply fake. I trust, but you know, it should be in the... Uh, I mean, it should be there. It should be there. Iris, Bell, absolutely fine. Any other remedies? Calcareas. Okay, calcareas, good. Chalo, calcareas. Pancreatinum. Absolutely fine. It's there in your report. Pancreatinum. Huh? Acid first. Acid first. Sorry. At least uh, in the report that I looked for today's class, I didn't see acid first. Sulfur. Sulfur. Bromium. Okay. Now, uh, you can just check if your remedies are there that you have contributed. I've just got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and one more, mark 13. So 10 more rare remedies are mentioned in your uh, repertory, okay? Uh, you can add carbovis here, okay? And uh, you can also add uh, arsenic, you can also add calcareas, fine? Uh, okay. Conium is there, yeah, conium is there. Now quickly, how do we differentiate all of them? Belladonna? First. Belladonna when it is more of an acute presentation. Or what is it? Acute pancreatitis. When you have sudden onset, when you have violent uh, pains, unbearable pains, Belladonna. Acute. And uh, Baratamur? Baratamur. See, Baratamur has something uh, very important. Okay, Venkta, they got it, and what is that? Indurated pancreas. I'll stop with one word, indurated pancreas. When you have indurated pancreas, two remedies, or three remedies should come to your mind. One is Baratamur, second will be Carbo Animalis, and third will be Cali Iode. When you have induration, okay? When you have induration, conium. Conium, like belladonna, it is for uh, acute pancreatitis. When they have sudden vomiting, sudden loose tools, pancreatitis, you can think of conium. Conium is the remedy mentioned in your repertory under acute pancreatitis, not belladonna. Okay? And uh, dioscoria is more of the colic. You know, when you have the typical pains, they feel better by bending back. It could be more of dioscoria. And you also have iodine. Iodine, you all know, is a beautiful remedy for glands, any gland. So is pancreas. Okay. But the speciality of iodine is? Okay, it can be atrophied, atrophied pancreas, possible. But when will you give iodine? You have that length in emaciated person, one. Increased hunger, possible. And if you are looking at a direct symptom for pancreatitis, diarrhea associated with pancreatic affections. Only remedy mentioned. 
only remedy mentioned in your repertory. Diarrhea associated with pancreatitis. Ayurveda. And iris, as Dr. Krishna Das rightly said, when we were students, the only remedy we knew was iris way back. Because iris was so specific for pancreatic problems. But one symptom of iris I want to highlight, burning pains. Okay, fine. Burning pains with pancreatitis. The only remedy mentioned is iris. Iris, okay. And uh, Cali iode, I just mentioned something. You'll have more of induration. You'll have more of induration. Pancreatinum and conium are two remedies mentioned under acute pancreatitis. And uh, you also have a surprise remedy, parathyroid. I have never used in my life. But parathyroid is the only remedy mentioned from the repertory that I have looked. In synthesis, okay, in the old version I have, parathyroid is the only remedy mentioned for chronic pancreatitis. Okay, chronic pancreatitis. You also have phosphorus. Can somebody quickly give me the indications of phosphorus? Phosphorus. Phosphorus, remember, whenever you have fatty degeneration, of either heart, either liver, or either pancreas, fatty degeneration of pancreas, atrophy of pancreas, and eh? atrophy of pancreas. You also have spongia, a very good remedy for the glands. Okay, calcareous. Somebody, I don't know, you know, somebody, yeah, Dr. Ramtadri was contributing calcareous arsenic. Okay. They can be remedies for uh, cadmium sulf and one more remedy. If I'm at Sionanthus, I'm not very sure, please check this. These remedies can be thought of in cancer, cancer of pancreas. Cadmium I'm sure, calcareous I'm sure, arsenic I'm sure. Even phosphorus is mentioned under the CA pancreas. Okay, you can think of those remedies. Hmm? Okay, so we quickly had a small discussion of uh, remedies predominantly acting on pancreas. Okay. Now the question is, what will Merck do acting on pancreas? Merck will cause inflammation and it can either cause hypertrophy or in the later stages it can cause atrophy. Atrophy of pancreas. Okay. So any quick questions here? All clear? So before we go to the next slide, what are we doing? What are we trying to understand in today's class? We are trying to look at the pathogenesis of a very important group and that group is Merck. So what did we discuss here? It is a deep acting remedy, it is a polycrest remedy and it is a, it's a no, the miasmatically, predominantly disciplitic. This we had in the background with the knowledge of anat, physio, FMT, pathology. We are trying to look at each organ. Merck group has an affinity and this being a PG class, we are also trying to look at the different remedies which can also come in and how you will differentiate them is what we are trying to understand. All clear? We'll go ahead. So what could be the third area where Merck group can affect? You told glands, you told lymphatics, yes. Skin, okay, before skin. Mucous membrane, okay. I'll just see. Fine, I mean, uh, kidneys. Okay. Hmm? I know, when I ask you the question, which are the other remedies acting on kidneys, you might have uh, you might have a lot of answers, okay? So what I want you to understand is, which are all the remedies from the Merck group which can have an affinity for kidneys, okay? And the top remedy in the Merck group which affects the kidneys is Merck Cor. It's not Merck Sol, Merck Cor, okay? It can cause inflammation, it can cause uh, albuminuria, very, very important. Okay, so the Merck group which predominantly acts on the kidneys will be first will be Merck Cor, then Merck Sol, 
Mark Sainetam and MIR. These are the four remedies from the Mark group which affects kidneys. Now what will these remedies do acting on the kidney? It can cause inflammation and albuminuria. Okay? Hmm? Next, mucous membrane. Okay. See, mucous membrane is also an area that needs a small discussion. See, kidneys purposely we have avoided because I know you'll be talking about a lot of remedies. I assume. So I, I don't I, I don't think you'll disappoint me. Remedies acting on kidneys. Like tobacum, sarsaparilla, berberis, hydrangea, huh? epis, aposinum, arsenic, I mean digitalis, the list can go on. Right? And from whatever remedies you have told, each remedy has an affinity. Okay? Done? So, mucous membrane, when you are looking at mucous membrane, again similar questions will come up. Which mucous membrane you see Merck affecting? First question. And what will the Merck group do acting on the mucous membrane? So it can affect the GA, possible. Huh? No, it can affect the GA, good. One, second. It can affect the respiratory, good. Okay. So GI and respiratory are two areas you see Merck affecting. Okay. Now what will Merck do acting on the uh, uh, mucous membrane? Like uh, one of your friends was talking about for dysentery. There is a point. Okay. And this is what uh, Dr. Richard Hughes says. You know, come to it. Now before that, acting on the mucous membrane, what will the Merck group produce. It can cause inflammation. Okay? It can cause ulcers. Hmm? It can cause acrid discharges. Anyway, we will be looking uh, in detail under characteristic symptoms. But I want you to understand that Merck group can cause inflammation, ulceration, acrid, bloody, burning, sorry, burning came twice, uh, typing error, or the discharges can be corrosive. Corrosive. And the Merck, see one statement I've uh, directly taken from Dr. Richard Hughes and he says Merck has more affinity for large intestine than small intestine. Okay? So this is his statement. Okay, and if you just look into the uh, pathogenesis, it mainly causes diarrhea and dysentery. Hmm? Anyway, we look at the character of diarrhea and the characteristic symptoms. Remedies which can affect the gastric mucosa will be Merxol, Merxcor, Cyanatum, Dulcis and Merxol. These are the five mercury salts which can affect the, mer I mean the uh, uh, lower uh, intestines and cause dysentery and diarrhea. Okay? Now, one more very important thing, very important area you see Merck affecting is, is, what is this? Huh? Very good, serous membrane. Serous membrane. Merck has an affinity for serous membrane. It will cause either inflammation or it can cause effusion. Okay? A better remedy for serous effusion? Good. Yes, no, that's what I wanted. Whenever the word effusion comes, please remember epis. Hmm? I'm not trying to tell you effusion is equal to epis. That is a wrong statement. But as a homeopathic student, you know, when I say effusion, one remedy that should strike your mind is epis mellifica. Done? Okay. So, kidneys, mucous membrane, serous membrane. Before this, what we saw? First slide was lymphatic, second was glands. Under glands, we try to understand the salivary gland, the lymphatic glands, the liver, the pancreas, which you, you have to remember systematically. Kidneys, mucous membrane, serous membrane. Okay, now what else? What else? Where else you see Merck group acting? Both, good. So this is what uh, the Tambrish uh, statement was, opening statement. It has an affinity for the 
fibrous tissue, the connective tissue, and of course bones. Bones. Okay. See so bones in some other class for pages I have uh, explained in detail. Okay. Uh, what could be the probable pathology that can come up? I don't remember the remedy. Is there in YouTube? Some class I have explained in detail. I don't know. I am not able to recall. But what will Mark do? Could be Salisha, yeah. We have explored different remedies in detail. Okay. So we will not waste time. What we can do is we will just try to understand the remedies having an affinity for bones. Mark cell, Mark core, Mark self and MIR. MIR. Okay. Now what do you think the Merck group is capable of doing when you talk of uh, bones? It can cause caries, necrosis, okay, and it can also cause uh, abscess, abscess, hmm? abscess, caries, necrosis, osteomyelitis, very important remedy, osteomyelitis, okay. Then anyway, I will discuss this in detail a little later. I show something. Hope you are not seen. Okay. So after bones, where else do you think? Uh, the, I mean, Mark group can act. See the beauty of going like this instead of exposing everything. What is the uh, difference when you expose everything? What is it that you will be missing? See. There should always be a certain amount of curiosity. At least as a speaker and as a teacher, I feel when I'm trying to tell something, I assume my students will be thinking, what is the image that is going to come next? So please do have the animation part, very important. Don't expose everything. So there is a rubric, delusion, naked is. When you put everything, you feel, you know, I mean everything is seen. You will be talking here, the intelligent PG will be looking at the other part. You would have already read all this and you would have gone there. So please keep it and with this students will be with you. There will be the eye contact, they are all with you. Otherwise, you know, they will be somewhere else, they will get distracted. Distracted with this fight, they will not be with you. Find very important. Done? Okay. So, Show what is required, how much is required, and then you can go to the next slide. Okay, so acting on bones, you see inflammation, abscess, necrosis, caries, and osteomyelitis. Hmm? The next area, yes, blood, 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 mark from the poisoning. It is evident from the toxicity. It is evident that mark people they go into anemia they go into anemia. Now why anemia happens is what you need to understand. If you start introspecting why there is anemia in a person with Merck poisoning, what is seen is Merck will cause degeneration of RBCs or degeneration of the blood cells. The result of degeneration is anemia. Okay? Hmm? So, not all anemias you can think of Merck. That's what I am trying to correlate. What are the types of anemia? Huh? Deficiency anemia, iron deficiency anemia. Huh? Megaloblastic anemia. Hemolytic anemia. So, ideally, Merck can be thought of in hemolytic anemia. Okay? Ideally, there might be some conditions. Constitutionally, our remedies might work for any condition. You know, but when you are looking at this specific thing, because we are talking about pathogenesis. So the type of anemia, where Merck can get indicated will be hemolytic anemia. Done? Okay. So degeneration, and uh, I have always uh, tried, at least in this class, to give you a small clue which are the other remedies affecting uh, blood from the Merck group? Merck Sol, Merck Cor, Merck Sinatum are the three remedies which have an affinity for blood and as we just saw it will cause 
decomposition of uh, the blood cells and it will directly give rise to anemia. Anemia. Okay? Fine? So, ferrophos, pulsatilla, china, or any other remedies you talk of or think of for anemia, now you know each of the remedy they have their own cause, their own reason for anemia. So these are all the basics. If you are strong with your basics, tomorrow your practice becomes beautiful. You simply not prescribe a remedy randomly for some condition. There will be a lot of logic, there will be a lot of justification from your side when you are prescribing. It's a beautiful science. Fine? So it's up to us. You know, it's a serious job because uh, uh, I am addressing to the potential teachers. It's a very serious job and uh, you know, it's your responsibility to put or you know, to teach the coming generation in a nice way. Okay? So anemia, Merck, Merck group and uh, skin is something that was favorite. From the time we started Merck, many of you were shouting skin, skin, skin. Okay? So if you look at skin, what you see is there is uh, Merckar, Merckself, Merckdelsis, Merck sulfide or cinnabaris, all these remedies they have an affinity for skin and it will cause uh, ulcers. It will cause ulcers. There can be inflammation, there can be induration, but you see more of ulcers. And cinnabaris, when I will be telling in detail, I will explain this remedy has angry ulcers, red looking ulcers. We will discuss a little later. The last thing, if I am right, or you, we have one more slide. Cerebrospinal system. Okay. What could be the probable pathologies that might come up and the probable Merck salt that affects cerebrospinal system? Quick. Okay, there can be degeneration. He's starting with the syphilis. And, uh, you know, there can be neuritis. Simple. Okay. There can be neuralgias. There can be tremors. And there can be Parkinson's. Fine. So remedies from Merck which can cause neuritis will be MIF, neuralgia will be cinnabaris, Merck, tremors will be Merck, Merckor and Merck, dulcis, MIF, MIR. And again a very good remedy for Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Okay. Now the last area will be the female genitalia. And if you just see the ovaries, there are also glands. Probably the glandular affection might come from there or what you see here is abortions, menorrhagia and anemia. Three possible things that can happen in the female genitalia. Done? Okay. So with this I will conclude today's session. When we meet tomorrow we will uh, look into the other aspects of Mara group. So 40 minutes or 50 minutes we have exclusively focused on a very small component but a very important component and that is the pathogenesis of Mercro. Okay. Any quick questions? If at all you have any questions I will be happy to take it up. In case if there are no questions, I know we have uh, crossed our time. Fine. So we will stop. If you have any questions, you can always come back in the next class and we will try to take it up. Thank you.